That's Rob from Property Investments UK and in today's video we're going to be looking at serviced accommodation offers some fantastic returns and if that's the case then why isn't everybody doing it or why didn't you just change the whole portfolio just to do serviced accommodation so we'll, we'll look at covering that aspect in today's video. So as we've spoken about um, obviously some of the benefits and stuff of serviced accommodation in kind of this series of videos Paul it looks like it's the best obviously strategy to consider it's what you should do for all your properties and obviously it gives a great return but i guess it comes a limitation to, or to a point where if it's so great why isn't kind of everybody yeah. doing it so what is it where is it you're seeing service kind of has a, a place if it were in terms of the market at the moment well firstly from an individual point of view the amount of effort involved with it yeah. you know if you have a if you have a normal job it, it would be almost impossible to do it because yeah. it's, it, it is a a full-time job you know we have a number of people dedicated to this yeah. you know and that's not one person you know that's numerous people who are dedicated to doing this and making sure it runs smoothly yeah arguably over more properties but you know it is it is not easy and plus obviously we've got the lease restrictions you may not be allowed to do it yeah you know? but, but as a one-man band investor i guess you can you can go and buy a straightforward terrace house sure, and, yeah. and self-manage it yourself but you're probably not going to be able to do that with a service because you're not going to be there in an evening or a weekend to let somebody in or to kind of meet and greet them or to try and get a clean around no. to clean the property. No, so absolutely. I guess that, that restriction in terms of management suits more of a hands-off nature investor because then they can work with teams like yourself to I do everything. I suppose the nearest thing to a service model for um, individual investors are the house and multiple occupancy, yeah. the HMOs. Yeah, yeah. But again, you have it's a different type of bill generally yeah um you have a different clientele yeah um you usually have some expenses incurred when it comes to uh, your tenants moving out yeah. um and that's the nearest thing and as we know now the regulations on hmos are getting stricter and stricter and stricter yeah. for the individual um in terms of the development side i, I think people are quite happily focused on the rental market yeah. a lot of them you know so when people ask about an oversupply for service i think there'll probably be an undersupply if anything, okay. because in Manchester now, I think I'm correct in saying it's the it's the largest growing rental market in the UK. Yeah, the massive like over the last couple of years in population, employment, all those things. Yeah, it's, it's, you can see it's, it's incredible. probably hard to see on the video, but you've got like cranes pretty much on every single building like around yeah. Manchester at the moment. The, inner, the, the the city development is is amazing. Uh, and this has been contracted out. These are asked for. These are demanded. Yeah. And the fact is, I don't think developers knowing how developers work, because obviously be within the industry is the effort it would involve them to start creating yeah. a service model probably wouldn't outweigh the fact that they can just rent them out yeah. willy-nilly on a, a normal tenancy, yeah. you know, that they can fill it up straight away. Far easy, because they've already got them systems in place. Yeah. You know, they can partner up with someone who's already got their systems in place. They don't have the systems to do it on a service front. Yeah. They don't have the staff, the employees, and they will probably look at their return on investment and say, God, you know, for an extra three percent, is it really worth it for the amount of people going to hire to do this? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and to facilitate what everything needs. And it's not even if you, even if you do have a cleaner contract, even if you do have the right systems in place to try and kind of make sure it's managed correctly, you've still got to find the tenants. So you've still got to. Have, you've still got to find. Just, yeah. It's not just as easy to stick on an Airbnb or booking. No, absolutely. Flood of leads coming in. Like yeah. you've got to be more proactive than that. You've got to have the right relationships yeah. with the companies, the organisations to 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 have enough properties in the right locations to offer them, I guess, mm. for them to, to consider working. And it takes a long time to get um, a rating with the suppliers that we use, yeah. you know, and, and um, them comfortable knowing that they're going to supply, because obviously there is an intermediary between us, you yeah. know, a couple of our clients, um, HSBC and Bank of America, we don't deal directly with HSBC yeah. Bank of America, they go to one particular source and that source has the relationship with us. Yeah. So you can't just go in, you know, A, an individual can't approach yeah. them, but be a company can't approach say right we've got this they'll say right okay well we don't know what you offer how yeah, you yeah. offer it whereas these guys you know and i'm sure there's a couple of others these guys have been doing it for nine years and we yeah, know that we get good reviews and we get you know we're happy putting them there yeah and if our, if our director kind of flies in kind of in an evening or a friday night and their tap isn't working they know they've got they know they've got and someone yeah they've, or they've lost their key or whatever it may be yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, there's someone will be there to look after them. Yeah, so it's not as simple as kind of just having the, uh, the system in place. It's finding the tenants and stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So when it comes to obviously serviced, I guess, why isn't everyone doing it? Because we know like the systems and stuff is in place, but also I think location is very important. So where we are at the moment in Manchester, Manchester's a growing city, there's demand there from other types of people to rent. Yeah. 
I think some people look at service and, and, and like the idea of the high yield and they say, oh, I can do it in our local village or our local town and stuff, but it's not, it doesn't work like that, does it? It's, no. not, it's not scalable as that necessarily. No, uh, you might be able to make it work with the short terms, you know, so places that are, are, are natural beauty, etc., yeah. that have a very popular trade during the summer. You could probably get the same for your 12 month normal rent yeah, over the summer, a holiday stay. place, yeah. You know, so there's plenty of places around, you know, in the Yorkshire Dales or wherever. I'm sure you could do little bits with that. Yeah. But not on an ongoing basis. You need to be in a pretty vibrant central place, yeah. you know, that's either in the city or very close to a major city. So, for example, the Luton product doing, you know, is just 23 minutes from London, yeah. which is one of the major benefits of it. Um, so, yeah, you've got to have that element to it. It's not just, it's not thinking, right, okay, hmm, I've got this house yeah. here, sat here. Let's make some more money. Doesn't quite work like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of effort behind it. Yeah, and that's why, like, when, when it comes to sourcing properties as well, it's not just a case of all the properties that we can offer. It's it's all going to be serviced accommodation because it has to be very specific. And I guess the location, the amount of kind of demand from those types of tenants, and it varies over. A and I, and I think one of the key things in it is that we want to make sure that even though we're putting the service model on it, and you know, as it stands, offering our clients higher returns than what we do. What we want to make sure is that at the end of the day, their exit strategy, so they've got, they've got a great standalone investment. Yeah. You know, it is in a place that will sell for them if they need to sell. Yeah, it doesn't just work because it's a service. No. It works because the, 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 the property, actual property and the asset is works. right. Yeah, 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 absolutely. No, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I hope that gives you some kind of context as to maybe some of the downsides, but what to consider why service accommodation isn't just right for everybody or why it's not necessarily going to be just because it's fantastic returns what it can do in that respect like why you should consider it there are loads of benefits to service accommodation but it's just a case of making sure that it fits for you and your portfolio and the property and also what your long-term kind of plans are within that portfolio as well so hopefully that helps thank you for watching this video if you like this content and you'd like to join our free online property training course we've got a link for it on this page and in there we cover a range of different property strategies to help you get started either building a long-term property portfolio or creating cash flowing property business we also look at ways to increase your return on investment with any of the property so you're maybe considering and we also have a couple of cheat sheets and downloadable documents in there as well simply click on the link to join the free training course today